the year, I think, you know, that's when we really, really, we had, you know, that, that summer off and all that. And we really put it together and we worked real hard to try to, um, to have a good football team. Man. So, uh, going into that, you know, that summer and stuff like that, that was a really hard transition for you, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, a whole, but you already had some ties to Naples. Um, yeah. You know, with your brother being there and right. your cousin, um, right. Howard. Yeah. That three and seven, man. Um, who are some of um, the notable players that you had on your team? I mean, we had, we had, um, you know, we had Willie Washington. We had uh, DeMar, um, Donis Washington, um, say Craig Lee. Um, who else did we have? Uh, and my cousin Howard. Um, you had Nick Wildman, right? Yeah. They had an all around team, man. On, you know, defense, they had some good players. And on offense, they had good players. You know, um, that's why they were tough to beat. You know, and so, um, you know, we played them at Barron. That was a big game, too. Yeah. That was a huge game, man. Um, it was so many people out there that game. I'll never forget it, you know. And, um, you know, our thing was that we've been losing all those years. And, you know, now, you know, we finna play a good football team. You know, we really, really got something. And so, uh, you know, to lose that game, that hurt too, man, because um, we were driving on Baron. And I think it was it was a bad call, man. Um, my cousin Howard broke, I want to say for like a maybe a 30-yard play, he broke. And, um, you know, as he was falling, of course, he was down, as you can see it. But, you know, when you hit your elbow um, hits the ground and the ball there, the ball jarred out and they call a fumble. But we were in driving distance of scoring. And that was the pinnacle point of the game, man. Because we were driving on them. And we felt like if we would have scored first, we would have won that game. Just how the game was going, you know what I'm saying? Um, it was back and forth. You know, nobody really was doing anything. Uh, it was a defensive game, and uh, Clifton broke, I think, on a counter tray, I believe. Uh, man, for like, a, I think it was maybe 50, 60 yards, man. And it was like, no. No, he didn't, man. No, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, imagine stopping, you know, a team the whole game. Game like, I got your number, you got my number. And at some point, somebody, you know, at some point if somebody slipped, you know, something happens that could be the game. Right. Um, and, and, um, you know, man, were the one that slipped. I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, you know, on that phone, it was just a bad call, man. I'm like, that, that really, you know, it was almost like, come on. That was obvious, man. He was down. You know what I mean? Because he was driving. And um, like I said, he broke that long one, man. That was like, it was like no way, man. You know what I mean? Couldn't really believe it, you know. Um, and so they ended up beating us, man. Seven, seven to zero. You know, beating us. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Talk about uh, that Bakali game, man. I, I remember yeah, the watching Bacali that. Game, the, yeah. Uh, Man, what's the name look like? Uh, the Nigerian Nightmare. Uh, Edron James. Yeah, he looked uh, like a gladiator, man. He looked yeah, like a gladiator out with there, that man. With that big thing on his forearm. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up uh, finding that. out that uh, what was interesting, um, they said that uh, Auburn, uh, he got that from Auburn because they were recruiting him real hard. And um, Really? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I forgot how I found out that out. 
Uh, but he, he, that, you know, that big old brace that he had on his arm because he dislocated his elbow or something like that whole year. Right. Yeah. That was right. crazy, man. I think he played like four games and rushed for like 1,300 yards dog, every game that he rushed for a whole bunch yeah. of yards. And for y'all, I don't even think he had like over 200. Uh, which that sounds nah, crazy he didn't. with somebody <laughs> like a down game was nah, like 150 yards. I don't think he even had a hundred yards. Oh, really? That game. Huh? No, nah, I don't think he had a hundred yards that game. Man. Uh, first, I want to say the first play of the game, um, you know, I want to say the first or second play, man, he broke a big one. I mean, he broke a big one, man. I mean, um, it was like as we began, you know, to set our defense and everything. I mean, I was like keyed in on him. I I don't care what anybody do. I'm going to eye him the whole game. That's just kind of what my mindset because I knew what kind of back he was, man. You know, he's a back that, you know, you can stop him in the backfield. But if you don't wrap him up, he gonna come up out of it, you know. You know, just my history of playing against him and Mockley, you know what I'm saying? And he's a big back. So, you know, you're playing against guys in high school. I mean, this guy's six one, six two, two hundred some pounds. You know what I mean? That's already the size of a college back. So, you know, if you stop him, you gotta wrap him up. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, I remember, man, um, it's like they were running a lead ice or something. I came up and feel he bounced it out, man. It was like nobody was there. And all I'm saying, man, he gone. You know what I'm saying? You just say, you look at somebody. Right. You're like, man, he gone, man. And I just knew it was a touchdown. I'm like, man, he let him break. You know what I mean? I'm mad. And all I see is Willie Washington come out of nowhere, man. Just come out of nowhere, man, and coming running down, man. And that was, that really saved us. If Willie would uh came and uh caught Edrin, we'd have probably lost that game. Yeah. Really was probably three plays to me where well, that game could have went went different ways. Cause that first play, man, he he broke, man. I mean, and the thing was he just seemed like he was much faster, you know, because playing um against him the year before that. It was different. I'm like, man, he done got faster, man. You know what I mean? And so it's like he breaks the first game. You're like, oh, man, it's going to be one of them games. You know, he's going to rush like three, four hundred yards. You know, that's what you're thinking. And you're looking at everybody like, man, y'all come on, you know. <laughs> looking at everybody like, come on, man, we can't let this happen. <laughs> you know how it is because Cat's going to be joining you, man. Eddie Bird works for 400 yards on y'all, man. Y'all sorry. Man, we didn't want to hear that, man. And they was already talking about it that week. Man, he ain't better from the rush for three, four hundred yards on Naples High, man. <laughs> man, we was just like, nah, man, we can't let that happen, man. We cannot let that happen. But he broke. And, um, you know, Willie, Willie came and ran him down. Um, and so, you know, the defense we was running because they was running like a, they had him kind of coming in motion. Almost like a um, like a wing T type of an offense. He would come in motion and get it like on the end of the round, um, you know, at times. But, you know, the way we had our defense set, man, we want to make sure that we didn't create any holes on the inside. We was in the 52. And then at times we would walk uh, DeMar up for extra run support. But, yeah, man, he, he could have. If we would have just let him loose and not really contain him, yeah, he was liable to rush for over 200 yards. And so that was probably one of our best defensive games uh, that we had. And i never forget it. Coach Bradford called a screen play. And I don't know if it was like on the third and eight or fourth and, uh, you know, it was one of those pinnacle points. It was like, man, if we don't get this, it's, you know, it could be over, man. And, um, Man, he threw a screen to my cousin Howard, man. He took it up the sideline and scored.
four, man. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, I remember that, crazy. man. It was like... Howard yeah, caught no that ball very awkwardly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With two yeah, hands. Yeah, like, man, he caught him on the screen. He caught that you know, thing and I'm like, like oh, you catching man. A, a whole sack of potatoes, bro. He just took off. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, how was how was fast. Oh yeah, you know, he had a lot of speed. So, uh, you know, when he caught it. I seen him, man. He went up the sideline. I'm like, man, he's gonna score. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, it wasn't real, man, because we wasn't like we never did really did a lot of screens. You know what I'm saying? We weren't that type of team, man. We just basic. We're going to run the ball, control the clock, throw it every now and then. We weren't real flashy. Um, but, yeah, that was that was huge for us. That was a huge win, man. I remember. I'll yeah. never forget that, that win, bro. Oh, yeah. Because everybody thought uh, Mockley was going to destroy you guys. Yeah, because, I mean, imagine, man, he, you know, he, he come – you know, off the injury, rushing for 300 some yards. And he like, you know, it's almost like, um, man, they got this bad banding in town, man. He's shooting up, you know, all the, you know, all these cities, man. He coming to your city. <laughs> what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? You next. <laughs> That's how it was, man. Yeah, it you know, was, he ripped man. lately out for, you know, uh, some big runs and, you know, you're like, oh, man, you know, you know how it is when you play high school football. You're looking at your stats and you look at everybody else's stats. Man, I want to see how many yards so-and-so rushed for. I want to see what, you know, who beat who. You know, everybody knows that. You know, you're looking in the newspaper and uh, everybody, everybody is on that. Yeah. You know, man, you don't rush for this many yards on lately. And then you hear about all <laughs> these teams. It's like, yeah, you next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. it's always like no man. And so everybody was like, man, Edgar from the roof through neighbors, man. You seen how he did so and so team last week, and you know, man, you like you got all that on your mind, man. You know, that's your your, your favorite week. You know, your best week of practice, boy. Hey, y'all, we wanted to get to practice early, man. We got a big week. <laughs> what would you say that year was the most memorable win you had? Oh man, uh, what? Cape Coral. Cape Coral. Yeah, for me, I I, I think it was Cape Coral. Um, you know, because uh, remember, um, I want to say us beating Cape Coral put us in position, you know, for playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the time, <laughs> and um, what? playoffs for Naples playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you want to talk about playoffs? Playoffs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, bad. Yeah. But we beat. I think we beat them ten nine, ten nine, and and I think they had um, I think a running back named Ray Harthon and some other guys that were really really fast. Man, they had some. Uh, fast guys on their team, and they had a decent football team too. And man, we went up there, man, and we just shut them down. I mean, they, they couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't do nothing, man. I mean, we we shut them down, man. And they ain't never seen that before. You know what I mean? I mean, we were just they couldn't do nothing with us, man. Couldn't do nothing. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, uh, that year, you guys put it on lately too uh, in the Coconut Bowl, didn't you? Yeah, we beat Laley. Um, you know, like I said, that was the last game. Everybody know the Coconut Bowl, a big game. And, you know, lately was at a transition. I think they, they had a, um, I want to say, a new coach at the time. And so, um, you know, for man, you know, we had some key pieces uh, in place, and a lot of our guys were mature. You know what I mean? We had, like I said, Demar, Willie Washington, man. We had a good senior class, and so um, 
you know, we, we really went out on the bang that game. Um, I think Willie Washington had two, I think he had two interceptions, man, for touchdowns that game. You know, and, um, you know, all of us had a, had a pretty good game that game. So, you know, man, we went out, we went out in style, man. That, that was, you know, my junior year, I think it was, you know, my favorite year, uh, playing at Naples High. Yeah. You know, seven to three, um, you know, the most games we won, um, in that tenure. So, yeah. You know, that was a real, real special season, man. We was all close. You know what I mean? We used to hang out. Yeah, you know, the, the, the black and mild man. boys. Oh, the Honey Cone Hideout. The Honey Cone Right, hideout. right, right. You, Josh right. Luster, you, all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, man, that was that was a, a special team, man. I mean, we had Jeff Hall on that team and, you know, man, it was just, it was just fun winning. You know what I'm saying? It's like we had this confidence about ourselves. Like, man, you know, we we good, man. We got to keep this thing going. And um, you know, um, all of us had that that brotherhood. We stuck close together, and you know, man, that was that was special because you go from what I think they went one and nine or zero and ten. Yeah, uh, ninety three. Then you go three and seven, and then you go seven and three, and you know that's 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 huge, man. Um, yeah. Talk about the expectations, man, going into the year uh, after. The expectations were, you know, pretty much the same. You know what I mean? But a lot of guys we didn't have. That should have been on my my senior year. Should have been on that team. Wasn't on the team. Yeah, you man. Know? You guys uh, missed a whole bunch of people, man. Yeah, a lot of people, man. And so, you know, we didn't have a good season that year. You know, um, you know, there was some 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 highlights, some good things, but overall, man, you know, if we would had all those guys who should have been on that ninety seven team, were back. Man, we would have we would have been something special, you know. We'd have been some real, real special, man. So, you know, it was a, it was a big drop off, and so, um, you know, not having those guys on the team, man, it kind of felt like I, you know, kind of felt like I was on the island a little bit. Like, man, I'm used to, you know, Jeff them being here and all the guys that should have been playing. Who you built that camaraderie with? You wanted them guys to be on that team, you know. Yeah. Cause you still got that mindset you building something, you know? And so not to have that, man, it's kind of like, you know, it kind of hurt a little bit, you know? Um, so. Yeah, man. That year, man, um, what did you guys finish? I think it was four and six. Four, four and, and six, six that, that year. But you guys yeah. were filled with young players but yeah lots of yeah. sophomores right because uh my best friend T- titus played uh varsity yeah that titus year. james cody james cody yeah and so you know and you know you know having those guys was a good thing but really the other guys who should have been there they should have been mentoring those guys and mentoring you guys mm-hmm as y'all were coming up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, we made it, made it work with what we, what we had. And so. Yeah. Who was in your you dra- graduating class? Was it you, Craig Leaf? Yeah, me, was- Craig, um, me, Craig, Nick Wall, and, um, let me see. Uh, Trying to think, Chris. Uh, Chris, not Chris Marizzi. Nah, not Chris. I don't think Chris Marizzi was. I think he, Chris, went on. Um, from that team, I'm trying to think. Uh, we had Gus Beatty. Um, trying to think who else. I think Jeremy Parrish. 
Uh, that's be the Jeremy Parish. Um, hmm. You can't. There, 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 not that many players, huh? No, not that. Not that many. Um, you guys lost you know. so much in your senior class. Yeah, we lost a lot, man. I mean, you know, you lose that much, man. It, it, it's hard to to really, really put up and have a good season. Yeah. You know, you can have a few guys on the team that are, you know, that are good and you may be able to do something. But if you have the guys, you know, 18 guys in the right position, man, on a high school football team, you got a, you got an opportunity, you got a chance to do something, you know? Yeah. So, because it's hard for young guys to come up. I know your competitive spirit, man, but was there ever a point? In that season that you just sat there and like, man, why me? And you know what? I should just pack it in. No, man, you know, my attitude was, you know, I'm going to play hard. You know what I'm saying? This is this is what it is. Uh, And I always been the type of guy, you know, hey, man, if this is what we got, let's make it work. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no use of crying about it. You know, if y'all are freshmen or sophomores and y'all have to be, you know, put in the position to try to make something happen, man, you know, let's make it happen. Because I've always been an unselfish player, you know what I mean? Um, it never been about me. Um, and so me understanding the situation, it's like, okay, these younger guys are coming up, you know, they're going to be carrying on the mantle, so to speak. So whatever I can do to help them, whatever I can contribute to the team, and that's what I'm going to do. And so I'm going to play hard and finish the season strong. You know, so that was always my mentality, man. Um, Always, you know, because it's your senior season. I mean, it's your last last go round, so you got to make the best of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. What's what? What's some of your memories of that uh, senior year, man? What are some notable players that you played against, and some you know games that you good games that you had? Well, well, back then, man, you know, uh, of course, you still had Baron that was a powerhouse. So, you know, notable players on other teams, uh, you know, Clifton, Rashid, and. Uh, some of those players on the Baron team, you know, uh, those guys were still thriving. Um, you know, over at Laley, you had um, you had Matt Paul, you had uh, Kevin Francois. Um, you know, they had the other kid was it Jonathan Garrett. Um, you know, those guys were a notable player along with some others, and so. Um, you know, I think at Lehigh, um, I can't think of the linebacker's name. Well, no, he might have went. He might have been gone our junior year. I don't know if he played our senior. Rodriguez? Rodriguez. I don't know if Rodriguez was there. I think he might have been gone. Um, I don't know if he played my senior year um, at the time. I don't. I don't... Um, I don't remember. Uh, you had the, um, you had uh, Jeffrey James from Mockley. Um mm-hmm. You know he was a notable player for Mockley. I think uh, Walter, Walter might have played. I can't remember yeah, all they were of them. Same players. Guys from Mark- yeah, a couple of those guys from. Um, you know you remember that man. You know what I mean. Um, you know those guys that you played against, and of course. Um, you know, when you look at your own team, the guys that you came up with when you first got in, like, you know, uh, you know, Craig Lee is a guy that, that, you know, I really look at that, you know, he was an unselfish player. So you look at people who came in, who really put in work, um, that was there all the way from the beginning. And now here it is, they're finishing with you, um, had another one, Nick Walt Bellin was another one that played that, that, you know, started out, all of us started out together. Um, you know, and so uh, Jeremy Parrish was another one. Um, 
you know, so you remember all those guys, man, and, um, and you know, when it's over, it's over, you know what I mean? It's like, man, the chapter closed. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you want to win and go out. But at the same time, the, the reality of it is that you just didn't have enough firepower, man, to produce anything. Yeah. Man, so uh, so talk about the re- recruiting process, man, where everybody on you, like, uh, you know, going yeah. into your junior year, I mean, your senior year. Yeah, I don't, you know, I didn't really start getting letters. I started getting letters. I got a few of them, man. My sophomore, my sophomore year, you know, a few of them, not many. And then um, after my junior, I got a, got a quiet a bit. They started really, really coming in. Um, uh, because like I said, I played uh, fullback and I played linebacker. And then um, it was coming in. Um, and so uh, I'm Coach Bradford. You know, I didn't have my highlight tapes. I didn't have no background music, nothing theatrical, anything like that that made it look special. He just said, hey, I'm going to send your tapes off. Just raw footage, man. I'm going to send them to everybody, um, you know, uh, who has an interest um, in other colleges who I feel that, you know, would, would coach you. Um, and then if they, you know, they want to, we'll hear back. And I had so many letters, man. I mean, all of those SEC schools, man. I had some from Miami, a few from Florida State, Florida, Georgia. You know, um, the whole SEC, I had a lot of letters, man. A lot of letters. Because my senior year, you know, um, you know, I was forced to play, um, you know, more tailback. You know, my natural position was fullback, so I had to play both. You know what I mean? Um, and so playing both... You know, you start to get more recognition, and so it's like I never came off the field. So from fullback to tailback, and then you're back to linebacker. And so when scouts are looking, they're looking at, okay, this guy's playing multiple positions. And so I think that increased my stock. And so, um, you know, all of those schools um, uh, recruited me. And uh, one school in particular, um, outside of the SEC, like Minnesota, they wanted me to uh, prop 48 uh you know, go to an independent um, uh, school, like a community college, uh, for a year. And then, um, you know, I would play for them for four years, but that would mean I would have to leave my junior year. So I didn't want to do that, you know. I wanted to graduate with my senior class. But, um, you know, kind of looking back at it, I wish I would have done it. But, you know, when you Well, they wanted you you to, to leave high school and go to a prep school? Yeah, I would have went to a prep school, uh, like an independent prep school. And, you know, you go there for a year, and then your transition is there at the university. Um, That's what they wanted me to do. And I'm like, man, you know, that's, you know, that's something that's kind of hard for somebody who want to graduate with their class. And you're looking at, man, I'm going to be missing all the guys I play ball with. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so... So I was like, man, I can't do that. You know, I just, I really wasn't feeling that. Um, and so um, Indiana University, you know, they was talking to me and Howard. And so a lot of schools, man, a lot, a lot of schools. And so, um, you know, of course, that feels good as well because you're like, man, you know, people are really recognizing me. You know, I'm starting to get these letters. Yeah. Um, was Auburn after so, you? Yeah, Auburn, Auburn University, a lot of the SEC schools, Georgia, Tennessee, Auburn. Um, and most of them were recruiting me for uh, fullback and linebacker. You know, you get the letters in, they let you know. Um, you know, of course, position, of course, they let you know what, what they're recruiting you for. And so uh, it kind of gives, gives you an idea of what you may play when you get there. So, um, you know. So, um, your senior year? No, actually, I didn't. You know, uh, one of the things that, that hurt me was my ACT scores. Um, that's what hurt me the most out of anything, my ACT scores. Um, I think at the time, depending on, um, for example, 
um, your core classes and your grade point, you can get in with a 17. Um, but if you had an 18, you were good. And so my ACT scores is the reason why I didn't go to a Division One school, uh, those schools that were recruiting me. So um, I went to a junior college that was kind of a pipeline that were, um, you know, moving guys into Division One schools um, there in Missouri, uh, Kemper Military Junior College. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and the reason why I chose them is because of the number of athletes that they were able to send to Division One schools after the first two years. So it was almost like, okay, uh, they got a good track record of getting guys to Division One. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to go with this. Um, yeah, you played uh you played with Torrance Marshall, right? Yeah, Torrance Marshall. Uh, and he played. We, we ran a four three defense, and Torrance uh, Marshall played middle linebacker. Now his brother played for the University of Miami um, as well. Um, and so when I went to junior college, I didn't know how good these guys were. You know what I mean? I'm I'm right out of high school, and and here I am. Uh, Boonville, Missouri, little town nowhere. Ain't nothing out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, here I'm as, man, you know. Nothing but a 200. KFC. <laughs> a KF, man, KFC and a Wendy's, man. And, <laughs> you know, a grocery store and a, and a place where you can wash your clothes, you know. And maybe a few churches around the block. But um, it was a small college, 200 college students, 200 high school cadets. And so you asking yourself, okay, man, you mean tell me that they got athletes leaving here like that? You know, so it's kind of like hard to believe because I'm at a military school, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's ain't like no major university, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, where they come meet and greet you with cheerleaders outside and stuff like that. And they got, you know, candy bags or however they do it, you know, nothing like that. You know, it wasn't, um, you know hyped up you know it's a military school and so uh you know it dropped me off i remember coming from kansas city man took a van flew in kansas city van drove all the way to um boonville missouri um they came and picked me up and you know we driving on campus or whatever i'm like man this is the school you know, you're like, man, like, man, I'm way long out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody wearing military uniforms and, uh, you know, I'm kind of like out of my element. You know what I mean? And this, uh, you know, light-skinned big brother, man, about 6'4", 305 pounds. You know, he's like, hey, man, you that uh, linebacker from Florida? I'm like, yeah. He said, man, I'll help you with your bags. Man, dude, just grab my bags and, you know, help me get checked in or whatever. And, um, you know... It was just different, you know what I'm saying? It was just totally different. You know, here I am, a Florida boy, and I'm waving the state of Missouri and just outside my element, you know what I mean? Um, you ain't got no beaches, you ain't got no mall, you know what I mean? You, you just, <laughs> I it lived ain't, out it ain't there. City life. It ain't like, it ain't nothing like that. Yeah. And in the winter hits, uh, it's even crazier. Right. And so, uh, like I said, you don't know how good these guys, you know, I didn't know how good these guys were, man, you know. Got guys from Florida, Georgia, Texas, California, Detroit, all over, man. And, you know, guys kind of sizing you up and stuff, you know, you checking in your bags. And then, you know, they had the upperclassmen, which was sophomores. They didn't, they didn't practice with us for the first couple of weeks, you know, kind of give us an opportunity to kind of get in shape and, you know, do some skills type of things. And so, you know, what was different is that, you know, here I am in high school playing linebacker. And when I get there, you know, they start breaking us up in groups. So I mean, I'm like, man, it's 18, you know, 20 linebackers. I'm like, man, it's a lot of linebackers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so you're looking at the number of players, you're like, oh, all these dudes going to play linebackers, you know? And so uh, I'm looking at the upperclassmen. And, um, you know, here I am, you know, you, you start seeing all these other guys just kind of standing around where, you know, those are the upper class and those are the sophomores. They didn't practice with us initially uh, when we first got there. 
And so, um, just, you know, working hard. And I noticed everybody just kept watching me, you know what I mean? It was just different. And, um, you know, the thing is, you don't know nobody. You don't know how good these players are. You don't know, you know. And so I kind of stayed to myself in a sense because I was outside my element and trying to be on a military campus and it's just different you know what I mean yeah um, you just don't go you know freely as you would want and so um, you know meeting guys like Torrance and Andre Taylor and you know those guys man that that was you know that was really really uh, a good experience for me because I didn't know you know where Torrance was from Hello? Yeah, you talking about Torrance Marshall? Yeah, I didn't know where those guys was from talking. Everybody got a chance to meet each other. And, um, you know, um, like they say, you find who too when you put on them pads. You know, you got a lot of guys just talking, man. I did this in high school, and I, you know, everybody just kind of, you know. Everybody's an all American. Yeah, you know, because, you know, you know, uh, you ain't going full pads. You know, you just got your little jersey on. You know, just got your cleats and your shorts. You just doing skills type stuff, drills type stuff, and, yeah. and everybody talking. You know, and that's kind of how it was. You know, yeah. um, did you start your first year? No, nah, I didn't start. Torn started. I, I kind of played Bill side linebacker. I played Sam and I played Mike. And so, um, you know, within the four three defense, I played multiple positions, uh, and so um, it was actually uh, probably I want to say halfway um, through the season where I started getting a lot of playing time, playing the uh, weak side linebacker. But certain packages and situations, I will play the linebacker. And they will move corners to the outside, almost like a rushing out back in three four defense because we would move everybody else around. And so, um, you know, man, like I said before, man, I didn't know how good those guys were, man. Uh, another guy named Jason Brookings. You know, there was quite a few of those guys played in the NFL. Um, and so, you know, looking back at it, you really don't know because you're at a junior college. You know, you don't know what these guys did in high school. I mean, they say what they did but you don't know what teams were looking at them and all that but you know after we all begin to you know leave after our first couple of years and you see them playing at these other schools you're like okay man they you know they 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 ball them and so yeah. Florence was one of those guys who uh, I think at one time he was trying to go to Miami uh didn't work out he went to the University of Oklahoma um and then we had Andre Taylor who um he played at Baylor, um, Big Ron. I want to say he played at uh, Lane College, a smaller school. Him and Jason Brookings, um, and all those guys played in the league. You know, um, all of those guys, um, you know, played in the league. And so, you know, it, it kind of makes you feel good because. At the same time, you're like, I actually played with these guys. We had another guy named Raymond Cato. He was an All-American at uh, Oklahoma State. A lot of guys on our team were Division One players. Um, either they got in trouble or either their grades, um, you know, wasn't uh, up to par where they needed to be, and they would send them to a military school mm -hmm. so they can get things back into place, and they would come get back. back in order. So I played against them. Yeah, I played against a lot of guys like that. You know, you're like, man, where's this guy come from? Oh, man, this dude came from Indiana or he came from, you know, Arkansas or Boston College. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. wow. You know what I mean? That was different for me. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like that's what junior college is. And, you know, but the thing is, it's like every man for himself, the competition was so high. You know, it's because it's like, hey, man, it's my shot. These cats going to be leaving their sophomore year. And then it's like, hey, I'm competing for that spot because everybody wants a scholarship. Yeah. Did you start your time. sophomore year? Yeah, I did. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, because when I when I you know when those guys left, they kept telling me that you know the screen game, you know the inner squad game you have. They said, man, you're really gonna have to ball out because that's when all the scouts come. And so I'm like, man, ain't no scouts coming out here, man. It's, you know, it was a small junior college, and so it's like you might get a few, but a lot. No, nah, I just it was hard for me to see that. You know, it, it was it was hard for me to see that. It was like, man, I'm telling you, that's when they really gonna come when y'all have y'all black and gold games. So you got to be ready. And so, uh, you know, man, I'm coming out the dorms, and man, I see cars from one end of the street to the next end of the street, man. Just, man, man, people from everywhere, man. And I'm like, man, this is this is real serious. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you see, guys got their pens, they notepads out, all of them out at the field, and you know, they scouting at this junior college. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I got my opportunity. Um, you know, I did well, and so you know, I was getting letters from a lot of schools from the Big Twelve. Um, you know, more than anything. Because it was, you were in the area. Uh, yeah, I was in Big that, 12 in, country. Kansas, yeah. Texas, Missouri. Texas, Missouri. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. was there some good competition in that league? Yeah, we, we uh, you know, back then you had Georgia military, middle Georgia. You had northeastern Oklahoma. You had Fort Scott, Kansas. Uh, well, yeah, Jeremy Coffee Shockey Hill. played in that uh, yeah, nine. Northeast uh, mm. Oklahoma, right? Yeah, NEO. Um, you had um, the boys that played at Kansas State. Michael that Bishop. Yeah, now Michael Bishop. Uh, those guys, uh, Michael Bishop. And they had, I think, three linebackers. Those guys all came out of junior college. You know, a lot of those guys came out of junior college. And yeah, so, Michael uh, Bishop was a monster in college. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys came out of junior college. And, you know, um, you know they did well, man. Did you play against Michael Bishop? No, uh uh-uh. uh. No. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, he was a monster, bro. He was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, how did you end up at Henderson? Now, I ended up at Henderson. Like I said, I was taking, a, you know, you get five official visits. And, you know, um, you know, I had some coaches trying to blackball me to get coaching jobs. And so it kind of. It really kind of messed me up in the process of going to Division One, and so. Um, Were you, you know, getting one recruited of my by Division One? Oh yeah, yeah, I was getting recruited by uh, Division One, just like a lot of other players. Yeah, but any but uh, college, yeah, any schools kept in contact with you from high school? Uh, now, now I got two letters from the University of Florida, uh, which was a shock to me because a lot of letters I was getting from. From like you know the Big Twelve, and so uh, you know one of the things they ask you is you know come to the Orange and Blue game and you know send film. Um, but in junior college, it's a it's a different type of story because now um, when you begin to un- understand coaching on the college ranks, man, coaches move all the time and they're trying to find that job to really really make money. You know what I'm saying? So if it's like, hey, man, I know Johnson, he's coaching over there at, uh, you know, the University of Florida State. That's my guy. We grew up together. You know, hey, man, I might have a way in. And so you might just say, hey, man, if you can get, um, you know, one of those guys to commit, you know what I'm saying, we may have a slot for you. Well, you know, you go from 80000 to making 200000 or something like that. That's a big difference in money. And so that happens in that that arena, in a sense. You know, you have uh, coaches try to pimp players for jobs. And so when I began to find out what was going on, you know, I didn't go along with it. Um, 
And so uh, I end up had a coach uh, calling me from Henderson State. And so I was like, man, I don't know, man, because I went to Arkansas one time with one of the linemen named Cox, man. And he, he was a farm boy, man. He was on a farm and way out in the middle of nowhere, man. I'm like, I ain't never seen that <laughs> Arkansas. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so uh, he said, man, just come down, you know, just come down. And um, if you don't like it, man, I understand, you know. And so um, I said, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, go up there, man. So. You know, we flew in the Little Rock, so Little Rock is different from Arkansas in some areas. And so here I am headed to Henderson State. I said, man, okay, this is kind of different, you know. And um, we got a chance to meet the players, the coaching staff, um, you know. And the whole setting was just seemed like it was more of a college setting. And so I ended up signing there and coach uh, – Charles Kelly, who is a defensive coordinator at Florida State now, that's who recruited me. And so he was shocked, Um, you know, because he thought if I were to sign, it would take me some time. I would need to think about it. Um, So before I left, you know, I went on and, you know, did my paperwork or whatever. And, you know, he ended up signing me. And so, you know. Did you take uh, any official visits to any D1 schools? I went to UCF. I actually, man, let me tell you what I did. I took uh, my, I had um, a small portion of my field from the game, and I actually went to um, the University of Central Florida, man, and I called Gene Chizik up, and i never forget it. And, um, you know, I went there and, you know, Gave him my film, man, and he played it. And he said, you know, you got a good opportunity to play. I ain't going to make no promises. He said, just, just by judging by the film, you know, you can play linebacker. I can see. So, um, you know, but the thing was about going there is that, you know, if I would have went there, I would have won a red shirt instead of just coming out and play because I was coming from a program that wasn't like a Division One program. You know, it wasn't like I came in a Division One program, I red-shirted, you know, got bigger, stronger, and faster. It wasn't nothing like that. I came from a program that just had pure athletes, pure talent, you know. And so what you're dealing with is now you're coming to a school where now all around you got better athletes. So I didn't want to jump in that way. I wanted to give myself at least a year to get acclimated to the school, the system, and everything before I actually played my two years. Okay. Um, but after talking to Coach Kelly and everything, I felt like you know Henderson was a was a better better fit for me. Um, but uh, you know that's kind of how things um, went for me there. Yeah. Yeah, man. So you signed to the baby SEC, man. You guys had a lot of uh, players in that in that whole league. Um, my yeah. boy Shad played uh, for Valdosta, and they had Valdosta, a man. gang of uh, players. They had the Kentucky quarterback Dusty Boner. Uh, they had yeah. like a Georgia receiver. They had a lot of players mm-hmm. from the SEC. Yeah, they did. Uh, Valdosta was a great football team, man. I mean, they was loaded. Um, they had a lot of uh, SEC talent. And that, that kid, Dusty Bonner, he was a real deal, man. He was a real deal. I mean, he, he torched us, man. It's like he was out there playing video games or something, man. He just, he was a real deal. Um, but, you know, they were just loaded with talent, Valdosta. Um, you had Delta State who was loaded. You had... Uh, uh, another school, um, Wachita Baptist College. A lot of those schools, man, they had great talent. A lot of those players were Division One players, uh, you know, on those teams. And so, you know, they call it the baby SEC. Um, you know, if you look, a lot of those teams are, are pretty much that ranked, um, you know, in Division Two football. So Yeah, the coaches had uh... – Chad told me that uh, Bill Muschamp was there. I think uh, Hal Mummy was there coaching. Uh, yeah. Kirby Smart was uh, coaching yeah. there. 
Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of other lot of uh, players, coaches. I think the Bowdens, one of the Bowdens, yeah. uh, was coaching in that league too. Yeah, he's still coaching up there. Um, I want to say North Alabama um, yeah. is where he's coaching. Um, you know, you have a you have a lot of coaches that come through there. They may stay for a short stint, or they may stay for a while. So. You know, like at Henderson now, you remember Cadillac Williams yeah. played running back Auburn. Now he's coaching over at Henderson, where I went to school. He had a job uh, coaching the running backs, and so oh, a lot really? of times, yeah, you find a lot of former players. They might, you know, get a little coaching job to, to kind of get started, and they might have some connections and you know get in with a, a Division One school. Uh, I know our offensive coordinator was Doug Meacham now. He's an offensive coordinator at TCU. Um, you know, right now and then you have Coach Kelly who's been with Florida State for I think about three years now. Um, Your head coach? And we had, was... uh, our defensive coordinator for Henderson, my, oh. my first year at Henderson I uh, was Charles Kelly and he's now the defensive coordinator at Florida State. What? Yeah, then you have Doug Meacham um, who was the offensive coordinator? Is the offensive coordinator at TCU? Um, and then we had um, Patrick Nix, who played quarterback for Auburn. Yeah. He was our head coach. And so, um, you know, that's how a lot of those those coaches start off. They start off small, and you might know somebody who they play with. This, um, you know, got some pull, and they get in. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. So how how did you guys do at Henderson? Now Henderson, when I got there, man, we was on a we was on a rebuilding a rebuilding phase. We weren't very good. You know, we had uh like I said our first year we had Patrick Nix as our head coach and we had Jesse Branch. Um you know, he was uh he played at the University of Arkansas, Arkansas Hall of Fame. Had some really good coaches, but, you know, when you look at the Gulf South Conference, man, you know, they were so loaded with talent, you know, and if you had a rebuilding phase, it'd probably take you at least, you know, maybe four years, and so I only had two, and so, um, you know, while, when I played there, we didn't really have a, a great football season, and so, um, you know, um but I had the opportunity to, uh, you know, do some special things. I was, uh, my, my, my last year, I was all golf south. I had led the golf south. Um, I had, uh, my last, like I said, I had 112 tackles my last season. Um, and so, you know, I had a pretty good career there, man. Uh, looking back at it, even though, uh, we was on a, a rebuilding event. And so, yeah. So, so when you graduate graduating, did you get any uh, looks for any NFL teams? Yeah, Jack, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, uh, was was the team that 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 was looking at me. Um, Wachita Baptist College was a school right across the street from Anderson, and um, it was a friend of mine, T.J. Bingham. Um, I think the Denver Broncos, maybe the Jets, the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, were looking at him. And TJ is about six five, two forty five. Um, you know, just just a big kid, man, from from um, Texas, and um, he had a great career at uh, Wachita Baptist. And so um, every year, Henderson plays Wachita Baptist, what they call the Battle of Ravine. You know. Um, will be kind of like considered uh, the coconut bowl or something like that. It's a, the first game of the season. Oh, okay. And um, you know, I didn't know. You know, a lot of a lot of guys in the barbershop were like, "Hey, man, TJ getting looked at by these teams. You know, these schools. I mean, um, you know, these different NFL organizations or whatever." And so I was like, "Really? You know?" And um, I didn't really know that. And so here it is. Uh, you know, Bella Ravine, and you know. I'm out here, you know, representing Henderson. I'm not knowing that, you know, these these scouts are out here, 
you know what I'm saying? I'm just hearing what they those guys were saying over in the summer, and so I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. Um, so when we played, um, you know, I had uh, 17 tackles against them. I had 17 tackles, man. And um, probably one of my best games um, that I had. And, um, it was that Monday. We played Saturday. It was that Monday. Um, usually you watch film, you lift weights, kind of a light practice. And so uh, everybody's headed up to the field house to watch film. So I'm headed to the restroom, whatever. I wash my hands or whatever. I'm going to head to the field house. I walk out of the um, the area uh, where the restroom was. <laughs> and the first guy I see is uh, this guy standing outside the door. Had a white shirt on and like black pants. And I'm thinking it's a news report or something, you know. I'm looking at all other guys at the end of the, uh, the hall. I'm like, man, they... You know, everybody just standing around. Well, I didn't realize this was a Jacksonville uh, Jaguars NFL scout. You know, I didn't know that. You know, I'm thinking, okay, this is a reporter. Maybe he's asking about the Battle of Ravine. Or, you know what I mean? You can get that every now and yeah. then. And so as I'm walking, everybody's, you know, they're facing me. And they're looking at him. And I'm trying to make the distinction. And I look over at his uh, shirt. And it's the Jacksonville Jaguars emblem. And I'm like, oh, that's what they got. And, you know, my whole mindset changed. I'm like, okay, now, how did this guy know about me? You know, and so when I was talking to him, he was like, you know, Saturday I was over uh, at the game. You know, I've been, you know, he was telling me to go around visiting different colleges and schools and players. He said, I was there to see TJ. And, you know, he asked me that. No, TJ, I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, he said, I just want to holler at you for a little while and, you know, kind of talk about your ambition playing NFL football. And um, he had a little, almost like, you know, um, and he said, I want you to uh, go ahead and fill this out and get it back to me. You know, I would take a whole lot of time. And so I'm like, okay, uh, kind of like a general knowledge test, man, something they do to kind of test where you are. I want to say on decision making. Yeah. And, you know, maybe like what you would do in certain situations and circumstances. I mean, you had a pretty good game. You know, um, you know, just asking me a lot of questions about football. I said, man, to be honest with you, you know, I didn't even really work out that whole summer. I said, you know, the game that I played, I said, I'm just going to be honest with you because I don't want you to waste your time. I know you're looking at other players. I said, but, you know, I had probably a few weeks to train, which I did. You know what I mean? Um, and I said, no, I pretty much got myself in the shape. I would go with the first team, second team, third team. So I would do multiple reps to get myself in shape for that game. I said, so, you know, I don't want you to think that, you know, you know, I had this great game and I, you know what I mean, just worked up to that because yeah. I figured, man, this is a scout. They'll be able to know where you are. And so he was like, he was really amazed by that, you know, of my honesty, you know, more than anything. He said, well, i tell you what, is there anywhere that, uh, you know, we can get your weight you know, and kind of assess you. And so, um, you know, we're in the recreation department, so they have all that up at Henderson uh, where I was. So, man, he gets my weight, man. I'm 230 pounds. I uh, mean, he's measuring my wings, man, arms, height, you know, all of that, man. And so, um, you know, it was pretty exciting for me because this guy was, like, laid back, you know. He wasn't real tense or he didn't come off as being arrogant or, you know what I mean, when trying to pressure me with any type of questions. And um, and so here it is, we walking back to the field house after he got my weight and measurements. Um, he asked me, man, like, so, you know, you know, what are your plans as far as playing ball? You know, he said, we're going to be, you know, kind of following you throughout the season or whatever, and, you know. Um, you know, what are your goals of, you know, playing professional football in the NFL? And I said, to be honest with you, man, um, I said, man, if it's God's will that I play and it happens that way, I said, and, you know, you know, I'll be there. I go. I said, but if not, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. And he was just like caught off guard by that. You know, he said, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I'm traveling from state to state. You know, trying to find, you know, uh, players to get them in. He's he said, never man, heard you know, somebody long... say that before. 
never hurt nobody because you, you got to understand they was just there looking for TJ, you know. And you know, my thing was is that you know this guy's taking out his time. He don't he don't really he don't you know he wasn't even paying attention to me. It wasn't like he came to see me. He was coming to see TJ, and so happened he's like, man, who is this other guy? You know, um, and so he left from the other college and he came over to visit me. And so, you know, I was just very honest with him, um, you know, about all of that, you know. Um, and, you know, I think he really appreciated that because I didn't waste his time, you know what I mean? And he saw the uh, the sincerity and the, uh, the honesty. I said, man, that's just, you know, where I am with it. You know what I mean? And so, um, because the year before that, you know, when me and Rashad was working out in James Cody, man, I had got up to about 255. Well, that was probably my best season. You know, I played four games and I had 67 tackles. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was on my way and I ended up spraining my knee and that kind of set me back. So, um, you know, I never really played a full season. So that first game, you know, to 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 have 17 tackles, that's a lot for a first game, you know what I mean? And so uh, when I told him that, he was like, man, I tell you what, um, he said, as long as you keep that mindset, he said, man, you're going to go far in life. He said, as long as you keep that mindset, man, he said, you're going to go far in life. So I really appreciate uh, having an opportunity Um to meet you, you know what I mean? He said, man, I, you know, a lot of times I miss my family, man. I'm on the road, you know, I'm just eating here, eating there, just on the fly, on the go, man. And it was kind of like a deep conversation, not necessarily about football, but more about life. And so, you know, I receive NFL, uh, you know, they give you the Scott Combine invites where you know, they tell you to meet, meet at this certain place. Uh, you know, they give you the the standing and statistics for, you know, a running back. They want the running back to run this 40 times vertical. They kind of give you a benchmark as a guide of what you should be reaching for. And so, you know, a lot of that I was doing working out with my brother, man. You know, me, Rashad, James Cody, um, when we worked out together, I mean, we was hitting it pretty hard, you know. Um, and so, you know, man, that was – that was one of those things, man, that you kind of like smile on because the notion is when you're coming out of high school that if you don't go to Division One, a lot of players, it kind of like crushes them to take a small school or a school that's not known. Everybody want to go to the, the name school, whatever that is. And a lot of guys think because you go to a smaller school that you can't get in. But if you look at it, if you do the research and statistics, a lot of those guys coming out of those smaller schools, Division II schools, um, you know, many of them don't have, like, outstanding numbers. But, man, they do real well, you oh, know. Yeah. And so don't a lot of those guys like J yeah, like Jason Brookings, um, he played at Lane College in Tennessee, man. Guy played, played for the Ravens. You know, man, this is a dude I used to – practice with <laughs> you know what I'm saying um, you know uh, Ryan Smith you know played for Seattle Seahawks these are guys I played with in junior college and so um, you know when you see that man it, it makes you feel good but at the same time you realize you know your worth and many times I think it's just making the right connection with the right people at the right time um that you're able to get in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I had teams, they want to send me overseas and play, you know, um, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, having guys like Rob Thomas, who played at Henderson, he blocked for Emmett Smith. He's another Henderson guy. And Katie Williams, a Miami guy, played at Henderson. He's another guy that played in the NFL. So a lot of those small schools, man, they rich in history and got players that, that have played, um, you know, NFL ball or, you know, things of that nature. So, yeah, you guys, uh, you know, 
what's the name said he played with a lot of like NFL talent. Um, Shad. Who was that? Yeah. Yeah, that team. I'm telling you, something, man. They, man, Brad Doster had a, a squad. I don't even. I don't think they even. I don't think they lost that hmm. year. I don't think they lost that back here, Dusty Bonner, man. He set all kind of records. I mean, they had, man, they just had talent, man. A lot of those guys came from SEC schools. It was just obvious, you know what I mean? Um, they had some really, really good players, man. Um, and, you know, a lot of those guys are Division One players and Division Two. so. Yeah. Um, like I said, they'll find you, man. The talent. They'll, they'll find you, man. They will, they will um, find you. They had a guy named James Atkins, man. He played for the Raiders, man. James Atkins was like 6'5", you know, 205, tall uh, receiver, man, kid from Missouri, you know. Um, you know, just a lot of different guys, you know, were able to get in. Man, I hear nothing but sirens out here, man. <laughs> I better get, hey, man. <laughs> but man, it's been great, up. man. It's been been great. Yeah, we do a part you, two, man. man. Yeah, yeah, we got, we definitely yeah. got to do a part two, man. Yeah, talk about business, man. I know you're a big finance guy, man. You probably own about three, four banks in Naples, and on you. No. <laughs> Man, I'm in uh, Fort Myers, the belly of the beast, man. Looks like something happened, man. Right. There's nothing but sirens out here right now. <laughs> right. Oh, man. But, man, Mark, man, it was great. Man, I didn't great. realize how long we were chopping it up, man. It must have been about two hours. Yeah, man. Yeah, we definitely got to get you back on. Most definitely, man. Yeah. Well, man, thank you for coming on, man. I got to go check on my girl, man. Make sure her and um, the little one is okay. <laughs> Doing okay, man. That's a game changer you got, man. Ah, oh, man. You got a game changer on him, boy. Game changer. Changer, boy. <laughs> a, few more, a few more nickel, dimes, and quarters going to be out your pocket, man. <laughs> Hey, hey man, man, we got to get yeah. back on the show, man. Um, chop it up, man. I got to uh, right. you know, get some fatherly advice, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can man. give you a lot of that, man. I, hey, man, I've seen you a year's worth of supply of the Pampers, man. That'll, yeah. that'll help out. Oh, you you going to do that for me? <laughs> yeah, I see you some Pampers, man. You're going to need them Pampers, boy. You're going to look around the corner like, man, I got to go buy some more Pampers. <laughs> man, it's expensive, I heard, man. Yeah, that daycare is going to hit you, man. It's going to get you. Yeah, I heard, man. Yeah. Hey, man, but I'm going to get off here, man. Um, All right, but man. But thanks you for coming on, man. I'm going to get you back on again. We can talk about business or something uh, more current uh, instead of reminiscing. Right. All righty, man. You get me on part two, man. No doubt, man. All right, man. I'm about right, to play that easy. Rocky. All right, all right. Close it out. Close it out. <laughs> all right, man. Be easy, bro. All right, you take care, man. God bless. No doubt, man.